Hello there! Today we shall make a lawn with this single grass leaf. We will turn this photo into this without any cloning. Only with the help of a custom grass brush. Let's get started! We start by turning our brush image into black and white. If we want to control how the colors and structure of the leaf will render in black and white, we can use a black and white adjustment layer to adjust the colors individually. The light grade colors of the brush will have a lower opacity than the darker colors. So be careful not to make a pale brush. One can always lower the opacity later. When we are happy with the result, we can merge the two layers with Command E and go to Edit. Define Brush Preset. Let's keep the name Grass Leaf. And the size of the brush is now 773 pixels. You can still make it bigger later, but it will then be a little pixelated. We can now start to draw with the brush. But it still needs a lot of modifications. Let's adjust the settings on a bigger canvas and a smaller brush for some headroom. We go to Brush Settings and start with Shape Dynamics, a little size jitter and scatter. We go back to Shape Dynamics for Angle Jitter. And up here we can adjust Spacing. Often I make Spacing and Scatter at the same time. Let's see how far we are. Time for Color Adjustments. We go to Color Dynamics and choose 100% Foreground Background Jitter and tick Apply per Tip. It's starting to look like grass. Hue jitter can be good for a natural look, but let's try it without first. That way we can control by changing background and foreground colors. Some final adjustments, and we're good to go. Like that. Well, we definitely don't need any smoothing. Now let's try it out. We need a blue sky, a blue color, press OK, and a lighter, warmer and more desaturated blue and select our Gradient Tool. We have to choose this one. And drag out a straight line by holding Shift at the same time. Oh, I forgot always from foreground to background color. To change these two colors back to the green ones, we simply go to Swatches and the recent colors are placed in the top row and a new layer, Command Shift N, we'll name it Grass. And let's draw some grass. And a new layer. And some more grass. It's a good idea to start from the top, so only the top of the grass behind is visible. And another layer. A bigger brush. And one last grass layer. Like that and one last stroke. 
The reason why I made so many layers is that it's now possible to adjust them individually, make haze, or lighten the colors in the background. Curves a little up, like that. And another reason, let me show you. A hard edge brush. And a bright color, red, warm red, press OK. And now we can sink a balloon into the landscape. We could, for example, do the same with trees. It's time to try it out on a photo. Let's navigate to our grass brush. Actually, I have a few and I don't remember which one we just created. I take this one. The grass leaves are upside down. But if we draw from the right to left, it's okay. It's because Let's open the brush settings and shape dynamics. We have direction instead of off here under angle jitter. Let's turn it off. Well, let's just try it. We can use it if we want to make small hills or bumps or even letters with grass, hair or anything sticking out. That was a detour, but hopefully a clarifying one. We still have to turn the brush around. We do that under brush tip shape. And we turn this wheel around. Like that. Let's start all over with a new layer. And now we have to find the right size, color and shape for this particular photo. Let's sample two green colors from the image. We can do that with the color sample tool or by pressing Alt or Option while we have the brush tool selected. Too bright, too dark, better. Mm, too little contrast. We need a more light green. And a smaller brush. And more spacing. And scatter. If we are happy with the new brush, we can actually save the colors and settings if we click on this little icon. Tool settings and color can be ticked separately. Let's try it out on the whole image. We start up here and work our way downwards. Don't mind if we cover the flowers. I have already a mask we can use later on. and we just keep on until the area is covered with artificial grass. And in here, now we are almost done. Perfect. It's now time to add some irregularities to the grass. We can make it a notch darker. Make a black mask with command I. And we paint with a soft round brush. Well, I have to press D to reset my black and white. Now I paint with white. It's only subtle adjustments I know. Let's convert these two layers to a smart object. 
That way we can add a non-destructive blur. And we paint with a soft black brush. We can make it sharp again here where the grass are in focus. Let's turn down the opacity in the edges, like that. And some more irregularities. Let's drag it out here. Clip it so it only affects the layer just under. Black layer again. and some lighter colors here and there. Now we go to our original image layer, duplicate with command J, and drag the layer to the top. As I said before, I have done the masking in advance, so we don't have to spend time on this tedious work. We can reselect by pressing command on the mask and add a mask on the new layer. And finally, we add a curves layer to make some darkness under the flowers. Well, I think that's it for today, before and after. We have now seen how to make a custom brush for artificial grass, but custom brushes have so many possibilities. We could, for example, make graphic elements for Christmas cards. We could put longer spines on a cactus. Make barbed wire. Or make grass letters with the help of stroke on a path. Only our imagination sets the limits. I hope you learned something and have great ideas for new use of the custom brush feature. If you did, please like, subscribe, add a comment or ring that bell for future notifications. Thank you and goodbye.